let's restart. Our next speaker is Tridip Sadhu, and he, he uh, he's going to talk about dynamics of tagged particle in single fire. So please. Thank you, Tamiro. So uh, this is going to be the third talk on single file. Uh, you heard on Monday, Professor Van Byron talked about it, and also on Wednesday, Sanjeev gave a nice talk. So in both of those talks, they mostly talked about one-time statistics of the tag particle in single file. So my talk is about multi-time statistics, or rather characterization of entire trajectory of a tag particle in single file. So this work is based on two recently published papers, one with Bernard Derrida and the other is with Paul Krapivsky and Kiron Malik. So in the first half, I'll talk about the first paper. In the later half, I'll talk about the second one. Okay. So let me remind you of what is single file again. So single file diffusion is referred to motion of many particles in a crowded one-dimensional channel where no two particles can cross each other. And such type of restricted motion has been found in many uh, physical systems. For example, in transport of iron molecules across cell membranes through narrow pores, or even transport of large molecules in porous medium, for example, in zeolite. Even there is uh, transport of many water molecules in carbon nanotubes, and even in biology. So this is a nice example where this describes how a DNA binding proteins moves on the DNA sequence. So what happens that there are DNA binding proteins which comes and attaches on the DNA sequence and then searches along the sequence to find a place where they could bind. And when they move, they move in presence of other DNA binding proteins. So this motion is something restricted just like in single file diffu diffusion. Okay, so the major interest in this subject comes from the fact that if you look at motion of one particle, this, this is the tagged one, this motion is subdiffusive, which means that if you look at the variance of the displacement with time, it goes as square root of t as opposed to linearly with t in normal diffusion. And this has been found in recently in many experiments. So one of the experiments which is done in Bangalore in Indian Institute of Science, which was uh, they looked at motion of many water molecules inside carbon nanotube, and then they found that there is this subdiffusive behavior. There were also other experiments which were about colloidal particles inside narrow channel. They also found subdiffusive behavior of tagged particle. And they also found, which was already known in theoretical calculations, that at large time, the distribution of the tagged particle position tends to a Gaussian distribution. The only difference here is that the width grows as t to the power one quarter. There has been a plethora of uh, theoretical works in the past a few decades. And actually, Sanjeev gave a one entire transparency list of all those papers. So I'm not going to give a, a talk about those, but I would rather talk about recent works which talked about, which discusses about large deviation functions. So it is known by now that if I look at the distribution of the tag particle position at one time, and if I look at its rescale, the position rescale with time, then it has this large deviation form. It goes as exponential minus square root of t, and then there's this function, which is the large deviation function. So from this form, one could see that all the cumulants of the tagged particle position would scale as square root of t, and also it comes out that if you look at at large time, and if you only look at the distribution of the tagged particle position, it tends to a Gaussian distribution. Okay? So one thing which the previous speakers did not mention is that this system has some unusual dependence on uh, initial condition. So it has some kind of long time memory effect. So which was pointed out in this paper in 2013, so which what they did, that they looked at two different types of initial conditions. In one case, the distribution of the particle positions at the initial time were kept fixed, and that was called as quenched in, uh, in spirit of the disordered system. And the other one where the initial distribution of the particle position were chosen from a equilibrium distribution, and that was called as annealed. So naively, one would think that if you look at the statistics at a very large time, the system would forget about this initial distribution. But it was not the case, and one found that in depending on these two different initial conditions, the statistics is different, and in fact, this large deviation function is very different. So uh, in the last uh, two years, this large deviation function has been calculated explicitly 
for um, Brownian point particles with hardcore repulsion. And there has been actually three different uh, ways of calculating it. One was using a macroscopic fluctuation theory, which is a hydrodynamic approach. Another one, which Sanjeev presented in his talk, is from microscopic counting. And there is also another way of solving the problem. It's by solving n-dimensional diffusion equation in a wet geometry. For a general class of single file diffusion, there is very little known. So this form is known, but the large diffusion function is not known. For example, in symmetric exclusion process, this is not known. But uh, there, has, there is a general formula, at least for the variance, uh, which was derived using macroscopic fluctuation theory. So these were the results which were already known. So in this talk, I'm going to present uh, the, the analysis of multi-time statistics. So it's not just one time, but actually rather the entire statistics of entire trajectory of a tagged particle. So it's something in the spirit of feynman kac formalism in Brownian motion, where you define action for one trajectory of a Brownian motion. So let me present you the results that we found. So this distribution of the entire trajectory of the uh, tagged particle has, again, a large deviation form. So here, I just rescale the position with respect to the final time t. And this rescale position has this following large deviation form, where phi is now a functional. Okay. So from this form, one could easily uh, extract out that uh, any n time cumulant of the tagged particle position would then scale as square root of the final time. And then there is a function here. Okay. And so these are the all cumulants. And from here, one could also extract that if you look at, at a very large time, then the distribution of this uh, trajectory of the tagged particle uh, tends to a Gaussian distribution of this form, where this is the inverse of the two-time correlation, and which has this particular form. So that all depends on what type of initial condition one chooses. So for the quench case, it has this one, and for the anneal case, which is this one. And uh, this is quite interesting because this is exactly the form of the two-time correlation in fractional Brownian motion with Hurst exponent one quarter. Okay. So in the rest of the talk, I'm going to tell you how we derive these results. So there will be two different approaches. One is the microscopic analysis for the Brownian point particles with hardcore repulsion. And in the second one, I'll derive all these results in a hydrodynamic way, which applies to a much general class of single file diffusion problems. And at the end, if there is time, I'll talk about a way of calculating the tag particle statistics for single for symmetric exclusion process, but at a particular density rho equal to half. Okay. Okay. So I first start with the microscopic analysis, which is for Brownian point particles with hardcore repulsion. Okay. So the analysis is quite simple, so I'll go slowly so that you could understand all the steps. So the first step is very similar to the one which Sanjeev has presented earlier, that uh, I'll first map the problem of this uh, particles with hardcore repulsion to that of the problem of non-interacting particles. So in the case of uh, hardcore repulsion, which is the single file problem, the trajectories do not cross each other. Okay? So I'm asking here the probability that if I want to look at the tagged particle at time t at position x, so let's say that is the probability this one, so one could show that this probability is equal to the probability in the non-interacting case where the particle trajectories could cross. So there, you only have to look at the, so, so let me just start the beginning. So let's say that in the single file problem, uh, the tagged particle was the middle one. Okay. So here you would ask, at time t, what is the position of the middle guy at time t? And let's say that is the probability here. So these two probabilities, one could show they are the same. And this comes from very simple reasoning that one could, from any trajectory history of a single file case, one could make a, another history of a non-interacting case by just interchanging the tag whenever they are cross, crossing. So given this, now I'm going to do the analysis only in this non-interacting case, and I have to look at only the central position of the central guy. Okay. Now, now the second step that I'm going to use is, if it, is the fact that when you are looking at time t, then the number of particles on one side or, or on the both sides of the tagged particle remains unchanged. So I've just took, I just have to count at time t actually how many particles has crossed from right to the left and left to the right. Okay? And that has to be equal. So this I'm going to do it in a bit um, 
in a bit in a notational way. So for that, I'm going to define two quantities. One is this quantity RTX. So this is a quantity which is defined as the following. So I'm starting with my uh, tag particle at the middle, and let's say it's at the origin, at the t equal to zero. Then I'm counting how many number of particles which started at the left of it, including this particle, now ends up on the right of any position, of a position x. So for this picture, you could see there are three particles. And at time t, there are only two of them. So this red and green, they end up on the right. So this is, for this history, it is two. Similarly, I define another quantity, r prime tx, which counts how many number of particles which started from the right now ends up at the left of this position x. So for this case, there are two particles started, and only one of them ended up on the left. So this is now one. Then one could show that if you look at the cumulative probability that the zeroth particle is at the so zeroth particle at time t is at the right of x is exactly equal to the cumulative probability that this difference is greater than or equal to one. Okay. So now with this one, I'm going to analyze the large diffusion function. Okay. So, okay. Now given this relation of the cumulative probability. And also from other analysis, we know that the large diffusion function for the tag particle position has this large diffusion form. And on the other hand, this difference, which is almost like the current, has again a similar large diffusion form. So there, is this, there are these two different large diffusion functions. So given that these large diffusion forms and there is this relation, one could immediately get that these two functions are related by this equation. Okay, where here r being zero means that the current at the position of x is being zero. So net current at the tag particle position is zero. Okay. So then I could compute this entire large deviation function of the tag particle in terms of non-interacting uh, particle case, in terms of the statistics of these two quantities. Okay. Now for computational uh, purpose, it's simpler to analyze a Legendre transform of this quantity. Okay, which is just defined in this following way, that you introduce this fugacity parameter b and define the cumulative generating function in this way, where the relation with r and b are through this derivative, this Legendre transform. Then you want the quantity psi r0, so just put r equal to zero, that will give me psi zero r equal to chi b xi, and this is the large diffusion function, where b is determined by just derivative of this. So this is the formal solution for this large diffusion function, where you just have to compute this cumulant generating function in the non-interacting case. Okay. Now I'm going to show you that how this calculation is explicitly done, which is quite simple. So the, this cumulant generating function, which is the statistics of this difference of the two quantities, are defined in this following way. So here there are these two cases, anneal and quench, which I mentioned, depending on the initial condition, and they're defined in quite similar way as one defines in uh, disordered systems. So the cumulant generating function in the anneal case is defined by the log of this exponential of this difference, where the average is inside the log over both evolution and the initial condition. Whereas in the quench case, the average over the initial condition is outside the logarithm. Okay? So I just have to compute these two quantities and then just use this result, which will give me my large diffusion function. And you will see that computation of this is quite simple. The first thing we realize that when we are computing this quantity, all the particles are non-interacting. So you could just, the, the result would be just product over all the independent particles. Okay? So this quantity you could write, factorize in this form, where yj is the position of the jth particle at time t equal to zero. Okay? So given that, now if I just do the average, in this way, outside and inside the logarithm, on the initial distribution of particles, which I chose from a flat average distribution, they would just give me these two quantities, where just you could see that the row comes outside, and here the, in the two different initial condition, only difference is there's a log here and there's no log here. Okay? So the only thing that is now left is to compute this quantity, which when you write down in terms of this single particle case, is very simple. It just the fact that if you start at position y, the Brownian particle, and 
it is at time t is at position zt, and then there's this theta function, okay? And x is the position of the particle that I wanted to find out. So I just have to compute this quantity, which is rather trivial to compute give for a Brownian particle, which this quantity you could just write in this form, where it is just in terms of error functions. Okay. So the calculation is very simple here. So the final result is just you take this function and put it in the result of this one, and just if you express this quantity in terms of this small f function, then this will give you the parametric solution. So the solution looks like in this form, once you just rewrite the things. So for the anneal case, the phi is this quantity, where f is the one that I showed you before. In the quench case, it is this. And the b is the parameter which is determined by this second condition that you take derivative with respect to zero, okay? So this form, you would, I will show you that when you go now to the multi-time statistics, the only thing that changes in are these quantities. And the rest of the analysis goes quite in a similar way, okay? So just a comment that although this is a parametric form, one could actually simplify the results. And actually, for the anneal case, one could derive this explicit form, which Sanjeev has shown in his, um, uh, in his talk. And for the quench case, there is no explicit form for the large deviation function. But if you look at the cumulant generating function, then it has an explicit form, formula. Okay. Okay. So now I come to the two time statistics. And the analysis is very simple and very similar. So now what I have to do, I have to define this R quantities R in two times. So for the first case, so just to remind you again, so first I define at time T1, the R T1 X1 as the number of particles which started from the left and now ended up on the right of the X1. And R prime are the ones which started on the right and ended up on the left. Similarly, I define the quantity for time T2. Okay, so then, one could show that there is again a very similar relation. So here you are looking at the joint distribution of the two positions. Then it reduces to the joint cumulative distribution of this difference at the two times. Okay. So then the calculation is very, again very similar. You just have to compute then this generating this cumulant generating function of these two quantities at two different times. Okay, and then put it in this relation, and this will give you the formal solution. It's very same as that of the one-time calculation. So then I'm just going to give you the final result. It looks very similar as the one-time statistics. So here, B is B1, B2, because I'm treating two times. And the Xi is Xi1, Xi2, which are the rescaled two times, uh, position of the tag particle at two times. And then this F is given in this form. So you could see that it's the very similar form, only difference changes in this function. Okay. So this is the result for two times statistics. And from here, you could actually calculate, calculate all the two times statistics of the tag particle position by just taking a Legenda transform and taking its derivative. So for example, one of the results that I mentioned at the beginning is the two times statistics of the tag particle position, which has for these two different initial condition as these two form, which can be extracted from just this one. Now the next generalization would be just to go to the characterization of entire trajectory of the uh, particle. So here I'm looking at the trajectory observed in a time window from zero to capital T. Okay. So that probability I could write down in this large deviation form. So in this case, now this phi is a large deviation functional. It's a functional of this entire trajectory. So for the case of Brownian motion, you know that this is like a free particle action. So I want to find out what is this quantity for the tag particle case. So even here, the result, if you just generalize the steps, which is rather simple to generalize, you would find in a very similar form where this only quantity that changes in this magenta color, which is now a functional okay, of these trajectories. And again, this is in a parametric form where one has to compute the B tau by this other relation. Okay? Now the only difference is what is this quantity F? So F is written in terms of just only one particle Brownian motion independent of any other particles, and one has to just compute this average, okay, where theta is the theta function. Now, there is no explicit formula for this quantity, but one could write it down in a Dyson series kind of expansion. And it's very simple to write down in this form, where B is this 
this function that one has to determine at the end, but it has this for following formula where this amplitude w of each term is written as integrals of simple diffusion propagators. So at the end, the expression, although look is long, but it's rather simple. Okay. okay, so this will then give you the entire statistics of the trajectory of one tagged particle, or rather history of it. And from here, you can actually compute, or again, by doing a series expansion, all the two times statistics or even three times statistics of the tagged particle, and also show that at large time, the distribution of this trajectory reduces to a Gaussian distribution, okay? which in the case of anil, is just a fractional Brownian motion. Okay? So this uh, calculation that I presented was for a microscopic calculation. Uh, for, a, uh, for a Brownian motion with hardcore repulsion, so which is for a very specific problem. Now, to what extent this results would apply to more general single file system where the particles could have more interactions or they could have different size and not necessarily point particles. So this problem could be addressed through macroscopic fluctuation theory, which uh, Jonah Lassino and uh, the group in uh, Rome, they have developed. So this would be an application of that for the tag analysis of tag particle position. And I'm going to derive all those results for the two time correlation using this hydrodynamic approach, which applies to a more general class of system. So let me just uh, remind you how this um, approach could be, approach starts with. So the starting point is to, is to go to a hydrodynamic scale where one could define a coarse grain density profile, which is fluctuating in a small, uh, no, which is not fluctuating too fast. So we have integrated out the fast mode. And then one could write down a equation for this uh, fluctuating density field, which is this one. And the term inside is the current. And this current has a deterministic part, which is written in terms of this diffusivity. So and Particle. No, it's the density of all the particles. Okay, so I'm starting with the many particles and I'm going to a coarse graining scale and I have a coarse grain density profile. And I'm starting with this evolution equation of that density profile. Okay, so I start at time t and then I evolve. So there's this deterministic part and then there's this fluctuating part where the fluctuation is um, simulated by a Gaussian noise. Uh, with delta correlation, and this is the strength of the Gaussian noise, which is called the mobility. So in this scale, or this description, all the microscopic dis details of the system are embedded in these two transport coefficients, d and sigma. So for example, in the case of Brownian particle, d is one and sigma is linear in rho, whereas for the case of symmetric exclusion process, d is one and sigma is quadratic. And the second part is now how to relate the position of the tag part. Yeah. Yep, sure. D is one, which is depends on which time scale you choose. And the sigma for the Brownian particles with hardcore repulsion is just two rho, whereas for the case of symmetric exclusion process, which is on a lattice, it's just quadratic. Okay. So now the second part is how to relate the position of a tag particle to this fluctuating density field. And this was the idea of Kiron, that uh, one could relate the position of tag particle by using the conservation of number of particles, which says that at any time, if you look at the total number of particles on the right of the tag particle, that remains unchanged over time. So which you could write out in this integral form. So let's say that the tag particle started at time t equal to zero at position zero. So this is the total number of particles on the right of the tag particle. And this is, again, the total number of particles on the right of tag particle, but at time t. Okay. So in this relation then gives you the tag particle position as a functional of this fluctuating density field. Okay. So then one could go ahead and apply this macroscopic fluctuation theory formalism and try to compute the generating functional of this entire path of the tag particle. So this quantity have the entire, in, the, the information of the entire multi-time statistics of the tag particle, okay? Now, starting from that fluctuating density, uh, fluctuating hydrodynamic equation, one could show that this generating function could be written as a path integral over two conjugate fields, rho and rho hat, with there is an action for each such uh, path for this rho and rho hat. And this one could do, there are many ways to, to 
derive the action, but one of them is this Martin C. G. R. Rose Jensen determinism formalism. But I'm not going to show that one. But the result is that once you do the computation, you can find this formal expression for the action. Okay, and the action. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I'm showing. The S of T is the action. So this part you could see just comes from here. This part was added to because we started with the initial condition where there could be many different density profiles. So for the case of quench, where the density profile is fixed and to the flap, this probability weight is just zero. Whereas in the case of equilibrium, which is the anneal case, this is just the free energy of the density. And this quantity is the probability weight of this history of this evolving density field okay, in terms of these two conjugate fields. Okay. So this is just kind of a Lagrangian. Okay. And it has this Hamiltonian structure where H could be written in terms of these two transport coefficients, sigma and D. Okay. So the, essentially what now one has to do, that at large time, this action grows with time. So in this action, you could see that that large time, the in, entire integral on the right hand side is dominated by the saddle point of this quantity S. So one just have to do least action uh, for this path. And the cumulant genetic function, which is just the log of this average, is then just the least action. Okay, so one just have to find out what are the least action paths, which I denote by P and Q here. Okay. So once we have this uh, cumulant genetic function, that has the, all the information about the multi-time statistics of the tagged particle position. Now, I just show you how the equations look like. So the equation for this least action pass looks, has this Hamiltonian structure, and also there are boundary conditions, which also comes from this minimization of the action. So there is one condition over one, this conjugate field, which is the same for both type of initial conditions, but the second boundary condition depends on what kind of initial condition you chose. So these actually comes out by just minimizing the action. So these are written in terms of functional derivative, but I just show you the, uh, after taking the functional derivatives, how the least action equations look like and how the cumulative generating function looks like in a formal way. So the equation that one has to solve are of this type, which are coupled nonlinear partial differential equations. So this hasn't gone yet not here, but it only goes into this observable that we are looking at it, which is the tagged particle position. So for this entire formalism, we have not used yet the part that the number of particles on one side of tagged particle is same, but we started, so one point where we use this conservation is when we write this fluctuating hydrodynamic equation, and you put this del x inside, the noise comes inside del x, so this is the conservative dynamics. So that takes care of one thing. But the other part that the total number of particles on the right hand side of the tag particle remains the same, that only comes in this definition of the observable, which is the tag particle position. So essentially one ha just have to solve this equation with the following boundary condition for these two different initial conditions, and then put it in this formula for this cumulant genetic function. And that should, in principle, give you the result for the entire statistics. But that in principle, I mean, although it's in principle one could solve, it's very difficult to solve in practice. But for the case of Brownian point particles, one could still solve the problem, okay? But I'm just, here I'm, I'm not going to present the solution, but I'm going to only talk about the case of multi-time statistics for which we have a general formula for any single file problem. So even without solving this equation, one could extract out this following information that the cumulant generating function has this following scaling, that if you rescale the lambda, there is just square root of t just comes out, which is the final time. So, and by definition, the cumulant generating function has this kind of expansion, where each of these terms will give you multi-time cumulants of the tagged particle position. So from these two, you could easily extract out that any n-time cumulant of the tagged particle position would just scale as square root of t. So this is the result that I showed you before. Now, how does one compute these cumulants? So one could go ahead by calculating them order by order in a perturbative series expansion. And by that I mean, I just define a small quantity epsilon in this fugacity parameter 
lambda, and I write it as epsilon ht. And then I just write down the optimal fields p and q in a series expansion in terms of epsilon. And then I put it in the equation of this optimal field, put it in the formula for the mu, and that will then give me an expansion in series of epsilon. And each one of those terms will give me my cumulants. Okay. One could go ahead and doing the calculation. It's a bit long computation. But at the end, one ends up, for example, with the result for the two-time uh, uh, two time correlation of the tag particle position. So for example, in the quench case, it has this formula where the strength is determined in terms of this mobility and the diffusivity. And in the annealed case, it has this formula, which is the very same as that of fractional Brownian motion. Now, one could check that uh, how the, the result agrees with all the previously known results. Uh, so for that, there are only statistics of one time uh, statistics is known. So there are all these three different results for uh, Brownian point particles, uh, for the SEP, and for colloidal systems. And one could see, show that all these results agrees completely with the previously known results. Okay. So this was uh, the result for the two-time statistics. And one could actually go ahead and try to compete for higher uh, cumulants, but which are rather more cumbersome and uh, difficult to analyze. And uh, also, the result that I showed here, it's more of a formal solution, which has so far been possible to solve only for Brownian point particles. But the results for more complicated problems like symmetric exclusion process, they're more difficult to solve. Okay, so this is still remains an unsolved problem. So in the last uh, eight minutes, I'm just going to talk about a very simple argument where, by using which one could actually compute the cumulant generating function of tag particle position for symmetric exclusion process, but only at a particular density. And the analysis is quite simple. So for that, so let me remind you what is a symmetric exclusion process is the particle which is hopping on a lattice with the exclusion um, and the rate jump rates are symmetric on both sides. Now in order to calculate that, I'm going to first derive a relation between the tag particle statistics to the, the statistics of integrated current at any site. So integrated current is you observe the current at any site T and integrate over a time window from zero to T. Okay? So, First, so I'm going to analyze only the quenched case, which is the fixed initial condition case. So the first thing is the cumulant generating function of the tagged particle in the quenched case. As I told you before, it is defined in this following way. The cumulant generating function for current is defined in the following way. So here, QT is the integrated current at position xi square root of t, okay, up to, so integrated current up to time t. Okay. And by this quantity, we define the cumulant generating function. So, okay, so as I told you, I'm looking only in the quench case. So initial, I started with a flat one. So just one, but you can actually average over this Bernoulli distribution, which will also give you this because you are taking the average over the outside. So essentially, it's outside the log. So essentially, it is dominated by the most probable uh, configuration. Okay, so, yeah. okay, so then one could show that these two quantities are related. And they're related by just this relation, where mu lambda is equal to nu lambda by rho. And the rho is the initial distribution of the uh, particles. And so nu at lambda by rho comma at site zero. Okay. And the reason this relation holds is very simple. So the argument is that you started with the tag particle at position zero, and you are looking at the tag particle position at time t. Now, for the tag particle to come to a distance x, all what it has to do, it has to push all the particles in between its starting point and the final point. So it started at zero, it is at, let's say, position x, it pushed all the particles in between, uh, between zero and x. Okay? So the current at position of the tag particle is exactly equal to the number of particles in between the starting point and the final point. Okay? So that then says that probability of the tag particle at xt is exactly equal to the integrated current, which is just the 
net number of particles passed through that site xt, that is exactly equal to the difference between the, or the displacement of the tagged particle. And for the quench case, we know what that number of particles, which is just rho times the displacement. So that would tell you that the cumulant generating functions of the tagged particle is related to the cumulant generating function of current at the position of the tagged particle. But this we don't know. But for the case of flat initial profile, there is a translational invariance. So this quantity is independent of where am I looking, where I'm looking at the statistics. So this is just the, the stack particle position dependence just drops out. So that would give you this relation. Okay. So all you have to know is the statistics of the integrated current at any site. For the anneal case, this is difficult. For the anneal case is difficult. So it's only in the quench case that you could do. Okay. Now you can check that this is indeed true by, for the case of Brownian point particles with hardcore repulsion, where both sides results are known, and you could see that, you could verify that this relation holds. Now for the symmetric exclusion process, the results are not known, and that's why this relation is interesting. <laughs> but what is known in the symmetric exclusion process is that if you are starting with annealed initial condition, then using a Bethe-Andat calculation, Derrida and Gershenfeld calculated this cumulant generating function of current at any density. But then using this hydrodynamic calculation, one could show that at density rho equal to half, the anneal case is related to that quench case by this simple relation. So the expression of this one at density half is known. That gives me the expression for this one. And my, using the previous, this relation, I now know what is the cumulant generating function of tagged particle at density equal to half in the quench case. And the result is this one. Okay. Now, this is a new result. And we checked uh, with the previous known results whether it's consistent. So one result that we had derived earlier in the quench case, up, so we have derived the up to the fourth cumulant of the tagged particle position, and this is consistent with that. And there were also other results which there were calculation at the very high density limit for this cumulant genetic function, which also is consistent with our, this result. So this gives you the result for the cumulant genetic function of tagged particle for SEP in the quench ensemble at particular density half. But the result for any general density and general initial condition case for SEP is still a very um, long-standing open problem. Okay, so th that brings to the end of my seminar. Uh, so um, let me just give you the summary of what I talked about. What are the two important results uh, that you should remember from the talk? That for the tag particle case, if I'm looking at the distribution of the history of the tag particle, then you could, you could see that at large time, the distribution has a Gaussian form, okay? and it converges to this Gaussian with this quantity, which is just the inverse of the two-time correlation, which has this form, depending on which initial condition you choose. And this is a general formula, in term, which applies to a large class of single file problem, where the microscopic details only goes into these two quantities. Okay? And if you are interested, in the rescaled position of this uh, trajectories, then it has a large deviation form, where, which, which has this following formula, which so far one could calculate only for the Brownian point particles with hardcore repulsion, but the solution of this for general single file problem still remains an unsolved open problem. Okay, so with that, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions or comments? Yes. Also, I think CT1, T2 was exactly calculated, right? I mean, uh, the Shotto and Rajesh had some old paper. Uh, so, so what I remember whether it was not for the only one tagged particle, or was it? No. It's a one tagged particle. Uh, I think I thought it's one tagged particle. They had this suite, and they also had this quenched and uh, annealed mm -hmm. cases. So I'm just wondering, uh, like, since you have a general formula, if you know d and sigma for the, that process, whether it matches. Uh, okay, so that I don't know yet. Uh, 
because I remember I'm not too completely sure. Because I, once after the calculation, I looked at it and I didn't find the two time, but maybe uh, I, I have to look at it again. Yeah. They, have they have two time? Okay. okay. Other questions, comments? This last time, uh, if you look at this two time propagator, yes. So it becomes this Gaussian, right? Yes. At some tilt. But uh, like, uh, uh, can you go to the next order and see what is the? So you had this expansion where you you had this one integral, then you had this two integral, which gives you basically this one, and then yeah, I think somewhere. Uh, you mean this one? Uh, no. No, no. You have. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so can you go to the next order? I mean, how? Yes. So the idea is. I mean, can you see how? What is the deviation from the Gaussian basically? Yes, there are higher cumulants, which is uh, if you don't. So if you look at the higher cumulants of it, it just decays as one over square root of t. So I mean, so third cumulant one over square root of t, fourth cumulant one over t to the three by two, which just comes out from this, sim I, from this. Uh, this, this scaling. So if you know that all the cumulus goes as square root of t, then you know that any n time moment could be expressed in terms of n time cumulants. Okay. And from there, you could show that any n time moments. No, no. Uh, yeah. What I'm asking is, I mean, see, knowing second uh, cumulant is not enough to find out the fourth cumulant, right? Only if it is Gaussian, you know. Uh, know. So, yeah. So, so, I'm just wondering whether you can just go to the higher order to, to compute the higher cumulant and see. Yes. So you can compute uh, this order by order the higher cumulants. But what I'm saying that just to look at how they scale with time. For that, you don't really need to yeah. solve this equation. Scaling with time is simple. But yes. I'm, what I'm asking is that. If you want to see the deviation from the Gaussian, mm. right? So you need to know the higher order yes. cumulants. Yes. So you're saying that in some scale it's like a fractional Brownian motion, but if you look at another scale, probably you'll have a large so deviation. If you are function. looking at this rescale coordinate, yeah. when you scale everything with, uh, I think, the square root of t, yeah. so then it is, of course, the phi function is not quadratic anymore. Yeah. So then it's not a, uh, a fractional Brownian motion. Yeah. But only when you are not scaling the tag particle position, yeah. then it's just fractional Brownian motion. And you're saying that it's difficult to get the uh, correction to the fractional? No, yeah, it's just lengthy calculation, okay. but uh, I don't think it's uh, difficult. Okay. Yeah. So you, you showed us uh, the results for two cases, right? quenched and uh, annealed. And annealed yes. right. uh, can you study other cases? Um, you know, so there, Yes, oh, uh, I'm, I actually... It's not universal, but... So, yeah. no, so for the case of Brownian point particles, I did study some uh, other initial oh. conditions. And do you see some kind of universality? So the, the scaling behavior with T remains the same. Right. Only thing that changes is in the function, mm -hmm. phi function. So this, uh, the expression for the large deficient function is just different. But the scaling of the cumulants and others remains the same. Uh -huh. Can you get ex uh, pretty ex explicit expression for so For the case of Brownian point particles, general. there's another ensemble that I studied where I did not start uh, initial distribution from the equilibrium measure, but from some other distribution. Yeah. And using this first, the analysis that I presented in the first half, one could simply apply that one mm -hmm. and get the result in a rather simple manner. Uh -huh. so for example, you can study kind of a transition between quenched and a new case. So, okay, so one thing that one could see that, so one could go from the quench result to the anneal result if you wait sufficiently long. So if you ha let the system start from the quench and let the system then evolve up to a large time t and then measure your displacement from this time t onwards, then it will converge to the anneal result. Right, oh, you, you can see it. In that the you can see. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. Are the... Quick questions or comments? If not, let's thank 3D for game.